Hello. <laughs> Hello. Do you like the dress? Do you like it? Yes. Oh, I could have looked like anybody tonight. I could do Adele or Liza or Reba or Adam Lambert. <laughs> Hopefully no one's afraid of clowns because you're really close right now, okay? Just so you know. So, hello. My name is Roxy and I'm a drag queen. In Greenville, South Carolina. <laughs> so, for those of you who do not know what a drag queen is, that is a gay man who dresses up as a woman for entertainment purposes. That is not to be confused with a transvestite, who is a straight man who dresses up in woman's clothing for sexual kicks, which is not to be confused with a transgender person, who is someone who was born in the wrong body, or a uh, transsexual, who is the transgender person who has uh, had the surgery to correct that uh, situation. So, I'm a drag queen. Yeah. All right, so, if you were confused about uh, what a uh, drag queen was, you're not alone. Picture it, Sicily, 1943. There's some people who watch Lifetime in here. Okay. <laughs> or actually, Clemson University, 2001. Um, I had a dear friend of mine who uh, was going on a date, a blind date, to Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. And so um, he asked me if I would go along. And I said, sure, knowing full well that if the date went well, I would be the third wheel. And if it uh, ha didn't, I was going to be the saving grace for my good friend. So we went, and ladies and gentlemen, the date was splendid. And though it didn't last, and we don't know what his name is now, um, um, we had a wonderful time. The date was at a uh, club called Backstreet Atlanta. It was, oh, yeah, some hedonists in here. Anyway, um, so it was a wonderful place. It was a 24-7 nightclub. It was open for 25 years, in which case it did not close. So during that entire time, you could do that in Atlanta back then. So we went, and I was flummoxed by what I saw. We were to go to see a show done by the Armorettes the infamous camp drag queens of the South. Now, mind you, I had a lot of ideas of what a drag queen was. I was like, oh my gosh, they want to be a woman and everything. I just had all of these ideas. They're going to pick on me, which they did, but moving on. And so here I am, I'm seeing these armorettes and they are spectacular. Ladies and gentlemen, they were lewd, crude, and hairy. Camp drag is a, a, a subform of the, uh, the drag world, a separate section in which case you truly dip, perform just for comedy, just for laughs. The Armorettes have been around for 35 years, in which case in those 35 years they've raised over $2 million for people living with HIV and AIDS. And that is their sole purpose. And they don't care if their beard gets in the way of their glitter. It, it, they don't. They don't. And it was at that moment that I realized that you did not have to want to be a woman to be a drag queen. You just had to want to entertain. And that started a lot of little boilings in the back of my brain. Let me tell you, it wasn't very long after that 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 same friend pu uh, pushed his thumb in the back of my back. Well makes sense, right? Back of your back. Yeah, anyway, so right there in the center of my back and pushed me over to the sign-up table where there was going to be a talent show. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is where Roxy was born, right in Atlanta, Georgia. And, uh, and that became a hobby and subsequently my career. It was during my time at Clemson University that my favorite musical uh, was La Cage au Faux. Um, oh, yes, I know. Um, incidentally, I didn't know about it until I had seen the movie The Birdcage, you know. And I saw The Birdcage. It was our favorite movie at the time. My friends and I would get together and we would uh, have uh, movie quoting parties where we would watch the movie on mute because we could just quote it from beginning to end on our own. 
okay? So we did this. So we quoted it and have a, had a grand old time. And in the scene, the, the, uh, one of my favorite songs from all of musical theater in La Cajafol. So we're, we're, double, we're double storying this, okay? So one of my favorite stories comes, uh, move, uh, bim, bim, bim. ha, get the flub out early. That's what I say. Okay, so anyway, you're welcome. No, um, so in the musical, one of my favorite songs is I Am What I Am. Now, this is where Zaza, the fabulous drag queen, who also happens to be the partner of the club owner, who has a son who's got a fiancé, who's got conservative parents, who is coming over for dinner, and the birth mother was nowhere to be found, so the drag queen dressed up as the mother and played it off so that he could have the mother of the son of the fiancé's conservative parents in order to make sure that it was all copacetic. Got it? Okay. So we get to the point where he just can't take it anymore and he has to be true to himself. And so all of a sudden, the wig comes off and he tells everyone that he is actually a man. So here we go. Yeah, no. All right. Um, <laughs> it took an hour and a half to look like this, ladies and gentlemen. An hour and a half, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's something else. So now, that, those two stories talked about two of the four points that I want to talk to you about. First of all is stereotypes. You've got the idea of what someone is based off your own preconceived notions or what you have heard from rumors and yet not necessarily put it in application by meeting someone and actually getting to know them. So you have the stereotype of what do you think a drag queen is and then you actually meet someone and you go, oh my God, it's a clown or oh, oh my God, that is fabulous. Okay. Um, <laughs> or bless your heart. And, um, <laughs> So you have all these different options, and then you have assumption. Assumption, that is where everybody assumes that, wh that they know what's going on. And, and again, that again is a false reality, just very similar to a stereotype. So you've got those two things. The next thing I want to talk to you about is fear, um, which is the third letter in the word safe. And we'll get to that in a minute. But... Fear is something that I can tell you uh, that I know a lot about. If anyone has ever had a secret that they needed to tell, they know very much a lot about fear. They know about those sleepless nights, those ulcers that you get, that, those cold sweats in the middle of the office because you're about to tell something that you never thought that you were going to tell to someone. That story for me was coming out of the closet and telling um, folks and friends and family that I was gay. That was a challenge raised in Greenville, South Carolina, um, that um, you are not welcomed in the society and the culture that is very conservative. So, you know, you go through all those sleepless nights and you, uh, you recognize that ultimately you've got to start the clock, whether someone accepts you within 10 minutes or whether they accept you in 10 years, you've got to start the clock at some point. And so I did in a number of cases, and some cases I still haven't, so let's be brutally honest. And um, being here right now is a moment that is super exciting and yet one of my greatest fears of standing in front of my hometown and my community and, and being here and sharing this information with you. <laughs> So, I was inspired by the theme, Unzipped, so <laughs> we might as well. So, let me tell you, what you're about to see didn't come cheap. <laughs> Neither am I, but moving on. So we've got to get ready. Oh, today's uh, body sponsored by Rooms to Go. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ta da!
Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a little bit more that goes on to this. For anybody who's wondering, no, I do not give makeup tips. Um, it's a bit slapdash, if you will. This is certainly not a day look. Um, <laughs> my makeup is sponsored by Home Depot. And um, I, you just should know that. You should know these things about drag queens. But um, if you'll just give me one second, I'm going to have ready. I'm back. Okay. Oh, wait. Daddy long legs. Everybody's saying, oh my God, it's Donny Osmond. No? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, folks, it took an hour and a half to get this on and about a minute and a half to take it all off. And again, I can't stress to you how interesting this feels um, w being in this town and doing this. Um, And three, two, two and a half, four, seven, eleven. I want a Slurpee. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you what, the last thing that I want to talk to you about is expectations. Ultimately, you may not know what you were getting into when we started about 12 minutes ago. I know that because of the clock. Um, but right now, you are seeing me. Hello, my name is Clay Smith. I am born and raised here in Greenville, South Carolina. I am a gay man. I am a drag queen. I love Clemson football. even if we have lost for five years in a row. <laughs> I am really excited to be here, and if I can challenge you with anything, and that is to ask questions. <laughs> Thank you, if only that was a male voice. Um, <laughs> But it, it's time to ask questions. It really is. It's time to get to know one another. It's time to unzip for one another. It's a two-way street. You can be just as zipped up in regards to wanting to know more about someone, just as well as you can be zipped up not showing yourself to somebody else. We all wear wigs. We all wear drag. It's the truth. So it's time to unzip for each other. It's time to share each other's story to find out a little bit about someone and knowledge reduces fear those uh those four words that i was talking about stereotypes assumptions fear and expectations they spell the word safe sometimes i think we have that safety because it's the enemy we know not the enemy we don't know it's the fact that it's something that we know and we're not willing to change our minds on it it's time to be open to changing your mind. I'm not asking you to change your mind. I want you to be open to that. I want you to know that I was raised here where I drank water out of a hose, not out of a plastic bottle. We've been pushing so hard for safety everywhere these days. Maybe it's time for us to live life a little less safe. Thank you, everybody.